Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the God of Israel, our Father, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, my Sheikh Yahweh Double honor to the elder apostles of Great Millstone. Shalom to my fellow laborers out there preaching the gospel. And shalom to the believers out there that believe on the gospel and our Lord Yahweh Shah, man. It's your brother Papaya coming back at you another lesson. Lord, we're going to be edifying and filling in the spirit. Right? It's entitled, Yahweh Shah will free us, will free his elect from the chains of darkness. All right? And I want to jump straight into the precepts. It's St. Jude 1 and 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he have reserved in everlasting chains under darkness until the judgment of the great day. So the Israelites, aka the seed of Jacob, the so-called Negro, Latino, and Native Americans, whose father's uh, father's lineage goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know, they are those angels. He have reserved in everlasting chains under darkness, which are these mortal bodies, all right? And this are uh, Psalms 82 and 6 to back up the point that we're angels. It says, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. But again, man, you know, the Israelites are angels in the flesh, and it will be revealed who the real children of the Most High are, knowing when the bodies of the elect of the nation of Israel, the remnant, get transformed on the, on the, uh, the judgment of their great day, you know, when Yahweh shall return. And this uh, Romans 8 and verse 20, for the creature was made subject to vanity, meaning to this corruptible body that we in, this sinful flesh, not willingly, but by the reason of him who has rejected the same in hope, because the creature itself, meaning the elect of the Israelites, also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of the Most High. So these uh, fleshly bodies, you know, that we in, is the bondage of corruption, all right, that we've been confined to. It's a, it's a prison for our soul, practically, you know, being subject unto sin, you know, but uh, Yahweh Shah, he freed us in the spirit, you know, from the punishments of the law to where now we under grace, you know, through his sacrifice, through his blood. And he is our peace between us and our father. And he broken down that, uh, that middle wall of partition, meaning separation between us and, and the Most High, right? You know, but physically being freed uh, into sinless uh, glorified bodies is yet to come. And um, I want to jump to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, to back that up, um, you know, of us being trans changed into immortal bodies. And it says, as we have borne, no, 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 49. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. So, you know, we know in the beginning, you know, the Lord clothed man with coats of skin, you know, as a punishment for uh, our disobedience. You know, uh, then came death. You know, uh, we then became death as a sentence over, uh, as a sentence of the Lord over all flesh. So like, you know, so all nations that come from Adam, they bear the image of the earthy now. You no, know, but their curse will be lifted off for the Israelites only, starting with the elect remnant, and we will be, uh, you know, the only people on the earth that has uh, angelic bodies. You know, bearing the image of the heavenly. So you'll be able to tell the Israelite from a heathen just by looking at them. So this is verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Neither doth incorruption inherit, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. So the Israelites has an um, incorruptible inheritance coming for them. It's our uh, first Peter 1 and 3 to back that up. Blessed be the power and father of our Lord, Yahweh Shah the anointed, which according to his abundant mercy have begotten us again unto the lively hope by the resurrection of Yahweh Shah HaMashiach from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled. And that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you. And we can't receive the kingdom of heaven like this, you know. The whole head sitting, you know, the scriptures say we still under the curses. You know, I mean, our kingdom will be on such a high level beyond anything on this side of the world, this side of this age, that we will need a celestial body to experience what the Lord has in store for us, you know. For example, traveling to outer space, to into other planets and chariots, you can't accomplish that feat in this mortal body because you'll die. We need a celestial body in order to accomplish that feat, you know. It's uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. And this is a mystery that the world pretty much don't know about. You know, that 
it's going to be a, a, a small portion of people that's going to uh, go from terrestrial to celestial, all right? It's going to tr- be transformed, okay, into uh, angelic beings. It says we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So again, like I said, on the elect, you know, they're going to go from terrestrial to celestial. And if you want to take part in that, you know, if you want immortality and be able to live forever, you know, especially again at this first go around, you know, instead of have to be reborn, in, you know, as a, a child of the elect in the kingdom of heaven, as, you know, being a baby and shit. <laughs> It's how you get it. So this um, Sirach 19 and 19. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. And they that do the things that please him shall receive the fruit of immortality. You know, so this is how you receive uh, immortality is by doing the things that please the Lord. It's Romans 8 and 8. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please the Most High. Galatians 6 and 8. For he that soared to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soareth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. So soaring to the Spirit, you know, through obedience, you know, to the best of your ability. And um, another thing that, that pleases the Lord as well is faith. You know, uh, he that comes to the Lord must believe that he is. You no, know, uh, without faith it is impossible to please the Most High. That's all I was looking for. So um, this is uh, Saint John 5 and 35 because you have to believe on the Son as well. And the Father. So it says, The Father loveth the Son and hath given all things into his hand. The scripture says, uh, All power, Yahweh yeah, said, All power is given unto me and in heaven and in earth. You know, He that believe on the Son hath everlasting life, meaning immortality. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of the Most High abide on him. It's uh, St. John 5 and 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believe on him that sent me have everlasting life. So if you believe on the Son, you have everlasting life. If you believe on Yahweh, if you believe on the Father, Yahweh, you have everlasting life. To continue on, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. So in order to achieve this everlasting life, man, this immortality, we have to believe on the Father and the Son. Or, you know, with your works. As well, you know, doing the things that please him to the best of your, your ability to add along with that, you know, because faith without works is dead. So let's go to 1 John 5, no, 1 John 3 and verse 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of the Most High, and it, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, meaning he how shall come back, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Philippians 3 and 20, for our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord, Yehovah Shah, Hamashiach, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. And let's get the definition for that word vile, because um, you know, this word describes the body that we have now to a T. So let's look up that word vile. Vile means extremely unpleasant and let's go to some synonyms it says foul nasty um bad horrible offensive um abominable off-putting repulsive sickening disgusting uh disgraceful let's see what else wicked evil sinful Corrupt, um, debased. So you pretty much get the point. Um, gross, god awful, beastly. <laughs> so this is basically describing uh, our bodies. You know what I mean? That we have now. You know, this human flesh is very low level. You know, um, you get sick. You, know, you have evil thoughts. You feel pain. We can't keep the law fully. You know, we go off and shit. We get tired. If this body is not even self-sustaining, if we don't put our uh, food and water in it, then 
you gonna you gonna die. If you don't if you hold your breath too long, you're gonna die. You know, this body is is on a very low level. You know, and um but soon we won't have to deal with all that um those things that comes with these bodies now because uh you know the elect you know and ultimately all of Israel eventually will have a glorious body uh like Messiah's you know which is the complete opposite of what was mentioned in that uh in the definition in the synonyms for that word vile and our bodies will be fashioned like unto his and our bodies will be fashioned like unto his so you know we don't know every single thing about a celestial body but we do know that you know we'll resemble uh, the Lord, you know, and you know the Lord tall as hell, you know he a giant, and um, you know he's dark skin, you know, with a glow to him, you know, beautiful, sinless, immortal, powerful, etc., and just uh, perfect in every way, and his elect will be the same way, you know, and uh, the rest of of Israel eventually, right, in the kingdom of heaven, you know, we'll all have uh, celestial bodies. You know, um, in our kingdom, but they have to be born into one as a baby. So yeah, man. Um, I'm gonna close out on this right here. Let's go to Acts three. This is what you gotta do, man. This this is what it starts with. Acts three, and verse nineteen. It says, "Repent ye therefore and be converted." that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. All right? So you have to repent and be converted, right? That your sins may be blotted out, man. Because your sins ain't, ain't, ain't blotted out, man. You're going to die and, you know, and be a part of those two-thirds that got, that got to get cut off according to Zechariah 13 and 8. You know, and you won't be able to receive the immortality the first go around. but have to be reborn into the kingdom as a baby. So repent, man. Shalom.